Hello, I'm Victor, and this is The Junkyard. By Jove, did I have a deuce of a time coming up with a subject for this month's roundtable theme of mainstream fanfiction, as well as one that would fit within my own extended Halloween theme. Some form of media published as a continuation of some original form of media that the author had no part in creating. It's uh, rather vexing until I thought of a singular character from a bygone age, Karnaki, the Ghost Finder. I've already mentioned Karnaki in a past countdown video, but I'll explain again. In 1910, William Hope Hodgson published the first Karnaki stories in the Idler magazine. They introduced a modern paranormal detective using ancient magics, cutting-edge science, and good old-fashioned detective skills to confront the things that threaten mankind from beyond their nightmares. One thing that made his story stand out for me, though, is that not everything he faced was paranormal. Sometimes, yes, it was some fearsome thing of shadow, but sometimes it was just some devious human trying to use people's superstitions against them. Karnacki succeeded against both because he was, despite being in a paranormal line of work, a skeptic. This element of the Karnacki stories increases suspense, since you never knew whether a given story was going to be Ghostbusters or Scooby-Doo. As for the format, the narrator, a friend of Karnacki speaking in first person, recounts Karnacki's recounting of his latest adventure. Anyway, this gives the reader Karnacki's reaction to events as they unfold, his feelings after the fact, and the feelings of an outsider who is nonetheless present in the universe where these things happen. Kind of a layered approach. Altogether, I have read and enjoyed all of William Hope Hodgson's Karnacki stories, so I thought that today I would look for the inevitable mainstream fan fiction and found uh, William Makel's Karnacki Heaven and Hell, available only in a Kindle edition. H&H &H is a collection of eight short stories written to replicate the format and style of the originals. The author adds and omits a few things himself. It makes for what I would call a mixed bag, but I will start with the positives. First, I like that he made Karnacki seem more dynamic. In the original stories, it was implied that the hero was constantly researching and experimenting to improve his methods and equipment, but mainly we only saw him using his trusty electric pentacle. Makel decided to have him try new devices and improve old ones. On the plus side, this gave us the cage, a device that allowed Karnacki to create an energy-nullifying space that provided some interesting complications and solutions. On the negative side, it gave us the Rainbow Electric Pentacle, which added nothing and was rather silly. But overall, his writing is pretty decent. Nothing outstanding in the prose, but considering he was limited to trying to write as basically another person, I won't be fussy. He came up with some interesting problems and a few interesting solutions. His attempts to write in a turn-of-the-century style were fairly convincing, but it lacked personality. He basically stuck to words and phrases a turn-of-the-millennium reader would recognize as old-timey. The original stories were full of odd bits of language that didn't endure. My personal favorite was his odd use of the term the creep in place of the creeps. Little things, you know? Since we're headed into negative areas, the magic and rites that Karnacki performs. See, in the original stories, he would say, I did such and such a chant. In the new stories, he'll say, I did such a such a chant, and it went like this. Hergum plergum dagger durger hurra cadavra yada yada. Um... First of all, that story lengthening techno babble or arcano babble, major babble, whatever. Uh, secondly, is it really wise to be reciting these chants to the people you're telling the story to? I find that summoning an elder demon is a good way to ruin a quiet night. Speaking of Karnacki's listeners, I was torn on another of Makel's editions. In the original, they didn't have a lot to say, nor much personality. The new stories flesh them out a bit, which I like, but at the cost of making them a generally annoying distraction, which I don't. They almost never added to the narration. And now the big crime of these stories, the make-or-break thing that broke. There's no Scooby-Doo. That is to say, it always turns out to be a ghost or demon or some such, never the work of a criminal human mind. Makel chose to leave out one of the things I loved about the Karnacki stories. And I don't use the term chose lightly. He actually had one of those over-talkative listener characters I mentioned say, I hope this isn't one of those stories where it turned out to be a human. Those are lame. I paraphrase, of course, but what remains is that the one thing that I thought made Karnacki unique is the one thing that the author thought was dragging him down. And lastly, I want to get to a few points that I don't think say anything for or against the book. The big one... 
Every character in this book drinks and smokes like a fiend. I'm not sure why this is such a big thing, but Makel is constantly having characters down alcohol and suck tobacco at every possible moment. When they're not doing it, they're wishing they could. It's distracting. At which point the colonel gave me a glass of port and a cigar, which I accepted gratefully, and he told me of his troubles. At this point, let me pause the story so that we all may restock. <laughs> Anyway, one other issue that came from the book itself. See, I got the Kindle edition, but I don't have a Kindle, so I got the PC version and read it off the computer. And in that version, at least, there's a weird thing where a few chapters are pasted in twice. So the last word of the chapter will, after a space, be immediately followed by the first word of the chapter, which starts all over again. I get the impression that the Kindle edition of certain books have these odd glitches, so I don't know where the problem originates, but if you decide to read this one, be warned. It doesn't make the book unreadable, but it can throw you off. That pretty much covers my thoughts on Karnacki, Heaven and Hell. I wasn't impressed, but it was well written enough to keep me reading. Not great, but somewhat entertaining. Well, this has been Victor with the Junkyard. Thanks for watching and have a good day. Then Gandalf the Grey and Gandalf the White and Monty Python and the Holy Grail's Black Knight and Benita Mussolini and the Blue Meanie and Cowboy Curtis and John B. the Genie. By the way, check out the other roundtable reviews for this month at the link provided. Oh, and uh, that reminds me, the title Heaven and Hell, nothing to do with anything. It, in fact, this is probably the most non-religious book you're going to encounter about the paranormal. I think it just sounded neat.